Hello everyone, Kyle here and today we're going to explore the entire evolution of the Earth using nothing but the cutting edge technology that is 2021's World Box. Last time we played, we recreated the Earth so well that it was actually a more accurate representation than what it is in real life. Yes, we made it realer than real. Get over it. We do things like that here. Today's challenge of retelling the evolution of the Earth is going to be a challenge. As my knowledge of this topic is rather limited, not as limited as the people who believe the earth is a pancake but it's still shocking to say the least so let's get started one day sometime in the past the earth just showed up out of literally nowhere back then it was mostly just a big ball of lava because the earth did try to build a crust but it kept picking its scabs and stopping them from healing i think the earth's surface would have looked a bit like my house dirty and void of any intelligent life it was unlikely that anything could have lived on the planet's surface except maybe lava monsters <laughs> But we're here to talk about science and lava monsters wouldn't be created for another a thousand years. Just to be sure that my theory is correct, we will go ahead and drop some cows into the lava. Yep, just as I expected, they die upon contact. But maybe if we just put enough of them, they will eventually build up some kind of cow island? Nope, nothing. Although the planet is beginning to smell like burnt steak for some reason. D sorry, I thought maybe chickens could survive. You know, like they try traded out the ability to fly for the ability to swim in lava but it turns out they're just generally terrible at being alive anyway one day the water turned up and the lava was buried deep below the depths of the ocean i'm sure there is some logical reason behind the arrival of water but i don't have time for logic so i'll just go ahead and say it was aliens yes i'm saying water was a gift from aliens ufos came at least more than 10 of them but probably less than 11 some 10.5 ufos came to our planet planet to dump the water. See, they were basically alien refuse workers, and the water was the stuff their species secreted. Then one day, we came along, and now we drink their waste. I mean, who does that? What kind of sickos are we? Sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. One day, a colony of single-celled organisms came to be. They decided to group up and take on the shape of a cat. This was mainly because I had no other way to represent them in the game, but also, it was history. Here is an artist's rendering of what this colony of single-celled organisms may have looked like, the colony would take the name of Gary. Anyway, I'm not really sure how these Garys came to be, so let's just say aliens. Uh, uh, we've done that one already? Uh, okay, okay, divine intervention then. Yeah, there we go, keeping things fresh. Anyway, Gary had a somewhat peaceful life on the planet, but in the first city of single-celled organisms, the Earth was pretty much their playground. They would spend their days doing single-celled organism things, like meow in playing with balls of yarn and flying around with harry potter magic hold on a second how did you get land gary we've not invented land yet there we go aqua cat over time more gary's turned up and they started as a small amount but grew rapidly a large gathering of gary's is referred to as a lot of gary's or a herd a herd of cats doesn't sound right yeah yeah it's got to be a lot of them really doesn't it um i'm not really sure though what i am sure of it was too many so the earth crashed head on with a bunch of meteors as a way to control the population. Gary was feline fine up until that point. <laughs> oh, do you get it? <laughs> Fee, lion, feeling, fee, the, the cats. So, you know, cats are feline. It's a cat joke. <laughs> no, but seriously, millions of cats died and, um, it was actually quite sad. Once the meteor stopped, there was no obvious sign of life left on the planet. I said there was no obvious sign of life. Okay, yeah, that's better. Next came islands. These islands grew from volcanoes and possibly some other things, but who knows really. What I know is that there were finely little bits of land scattered around and apparently lightning because I didn't mean to do that. It's happened now though, hasn't it? So, you know, we can't take it back. It's part of history. Yes, lightning that set fire to the sand. How is this even happening? Hold on, trees? The heck? Why are there trees? I definitely said nothing about you yet. We'll just, yeah, okay, and we'll set fire to you. Yeah, uh, uh, okay, great. The trees are dead. Next came a big old ice age that froze the seas solid. I said it froze the seas. Okay, the seas can't freeze in this game. So we'll just go ahead and cover the map in land. Now there are no seas to freeze. But yes, there was an ice age and it was so cold that a lot of the Garys just froze in 
one place. Not the main Gary though, he missed the whole experience as he was out shopping. Okay, why is there a crab? Why do things keep coming into existence that I haven't said are there yet? What the heck is this? Just delete the crab. Oh, and another tree. A freaking polar bear. Come on, stop already. It's starting to get like a faulty freezer on this planet. All the cells are unfreezing and refreezing. Who knows what mutations will occur. Once the ice age melted, it left behind little badly made islands. The earth wasn't happy with how bad the islands looked, so it had another ice age to try again. Once the second ice age defrosted, the islands looked a bit better. It was satisfactory at this point. With the melting of the ice, a lot of the Garys were released back into the wild. We'll simulate the release with carefully calculated placements, trying to match their migration patterns. There was a sudden explosion of oxygen on the planet. I think it was something to do with photosyn... photosynthesizers? Photosynthes... photosensor... damn it. Let me try that again. Hold on, hold on. Sudden explosion. Oxygen. Had something to do with uh, Gary burping. Yeah, yeah. Gary's burping brought oxygen. That thing that makes air less exciting than being in a room filled with carbon dioxide. With this sudden boom of oxygen came new life. Multi-celled organisms, which is like more than one cell. As we don't have this in the game, we'll just do these as dogs. We'll just make sure that they're all over the planet. There we go, lovely. That's a pretty good looking cellular ecosystem, if I do say so myself. Next, we'll name the new cells, and because names weren't invented then, we'll call them Gary too. That was pretty much as much new life as there was, because Gary was ultimately selfish and didn't produce enough oxygen to really get things started. So the land had developed quite a lot by this point. There were mountain ranges popping up, which would kill the cells because they didn't like high altitudes apparently. There was also the first plant life arriving on the lands in the form of mushrooms. The mushrooms were as tall as trees and whispered stories of a small Italian man that would come out at night and nibble on their young. There was also the infamous Mushroom Island. This was just an island that looked like a mushroom. There wasn't really anything bad about it, so I don't really know where it got the infamous title from. Probably some kind of clickbait to get people to live on it. Anyway, there was finally a bit of life on the planet and both the Garys and the Garys too lived in perfect harmony with one another, except for this guy. This guy was a jerk. At this point, I suppose I could make a joke about mushrooms. I could tell you about the fact that Gary was a fun guy, except I won't because he was mostly just a dick. Gary too, on the other hand, was a fun guy and this was made obvious because of the way it has been written. I guess I could have applied the joke there then. Uh, missed opportunities, hey? At this point, all the land masses decided to get together and form like this big island, almost like a super continent, which should not be mistaken with super incontinent, which is just what I am. But yeah, the islands got together, the mushrooms followed, it was a really lovely time. Unless you were stuck here, then it just sucked. But on the mainland, it was great. The islands celebrated their new union like any islands do, with a bowling party and fireworks. It was a fun night for all, up until Darren arrived and made things weird. You know that person that just ends up crying in a corner and embarrassing themselves. Every friend group has one. My group didn't have one. I don't think... Uh, oh god, I was Darren, wasn't I? Uh. Anyway, Kyle, I mean Darren, caused the other landmasses to part ways. We ended up with more of an islands theme than big landmasses, just so that they could avoid hanging out with Darren. Eventually, the earth broke again, and there was yet another overly predictable ice age. I mean, really? Come on. When I say just like, okay, fine, I can live with this, two is like, hmm, I'm getting the hint something is off, but a half a dozen of them is like, just die already, I don't want life on me. Anyway, a lot of time passes and nothing of interest happens, which is pretty much the story of my life. The frost melted from the most recent bout of ice ages and some cooler looking islands appeared. The new sleek island designs drew the attention of space fish. These space fish came to earth and were scammed into buying timeshares by Gary. I guess the earth was finally able to sustain life on it or something, who knows. There were fish that 
though. Stupid, dumb, pointless fish. The fish were soon all over the planet in every ocean, like the trash they are. There was also the first ever penguin born to a couple of fish, which was weird, but they chose not to question it. Instead, they just raised him as if it was one of their own. The penguin would grow up to establish birds as a type of beast on the planet, but they would have except the fish ate them. So yeah, I guess that's not happening yet, is it? Oh well, one day. On the land, everyone had got sick of seeing nothing but mushrooms, so new plant life developed. Grass came to the lands, and along with the grass came the Lion King land, Yoda land, and the Jungle Book land. The earth was finally starting to look like a proper little earth. There was life literally bursting from every rock and bush. You couldn't look in any direction without seeing something alive. So what did the earth do? Well, it froze over again. Damn it, Earth, will you stop killing everything I'm doing? So when it defrost, islands came, land and stuff again. It was wonderful. Really, I mean it. Um, not being sarcastic. Looking forward to all this getting ruined again, hey? <laughs> Love starting over. Unfortunately, the fish also came back. Okay, so we've established that fish are lame, and even fish know this, which is why one day a fish looked into a fish mirror and was like, Do you know what? I hate this fish stuff. I don't even like swimming. We are literally swimming in our own piss. So the fish just flopped out onto land and died, apparently. Uh, no, he, he flopped it. Yeah, the fish just flopped out onto land and yeah, on land. And he sprouted legs and became a crab. Word got out about how cool it was on the land compared to being in the water. And more fish sprouted legs and joined the land livers. It was really nice except they could never return to the ocean as the fish purists hated change. Once the fish creatures were roaming on the land, there suddenly came amphibians, you know, like frogs and stuff. I imagine it was the result of breeding fish and lizards or some weird science fiction love story, but all the tests I've tried to carry out just resulted in a lizard drowning. Speaking of lizards, reptiles came too, which we will represent with these sea turtles. The other thing that arrived were mammal-like reptiles, which are reptiles except they have boobies. Something that has boobies is a cow, so we will represent these with cows. So, it was a pretty confusing time to be alive, things were just sprouting into it existence that really shouldn't have been. Pure abominations of nature if I'm honest. The planet wasn't finished making these abominations. So one day, from a tiny little lizard, a dinosaur was born into life. Then we had dinosaurs, which apparently want to get killed by the fish. Come on man, if you die then there won't be no dinosaurs. Uh, uh, wait a minute, you had some babies didn't you? <laughs> that was lucky. So more dinosaurs came and kicked the ass of the fishes. There were different types of dinosaurs dinosaurs so we'll represent these other ones with domesticated chickens. The lands were getting pretty full now so a lot of the creatures would just fight over space. It was turning into a proper royal rumble, something that can only be witnessed in places like the ring of a wrestling match or Sydney Australia. Oh cool, we can make things bigger. They look way more like dinosaurs now don't they? Just have to avoid making the dogs bigger. Oh damn it I made the dogs bigger. Okay well we just need to kill the dogs, leave the dino chickens and dino crocs. Great. We had to make some sacrifices, but quick decision making like that is what makes a good leader a bad one. Anyway, eventually all the dinosaurs got tired of fighting the single and multi-celled organisms, and they began to get on with one another. They agreed that from this day forth they would never fight again, and instead prioritised the life of the planet above all else. With the peace treaty in place came room for more abominations of nature, so finally, fully blown mammals arrived. We'll represent these with mice. Yes, little tiny mice roamed the earth being all mammal-like. The dinosaurs welcomed their tiny cousins with open arms, something they should have avoided because apparently the mice had the plague. Ugh, what? This isn't how the dinosaurs die, I don't think. Historical accuracy must be achieved. Quickly, meteors. More meteors running down on all. Die, die, die. <laughs> Everything was dead, oh, except for this dog. Thank <laughs> you.
Yes, everything was dead now. So the earth reshaped itself for a final time. I mean, it continued to reshape itself over the course of history, but this is the last time I'm going to do it out of laziness. So just close your eyes and imagine it changing from this point forward. The land was finally beginning to resemble that of what we know today. Take Italy, for example. If you squint your eyes and look at it from the right angle, you can just barely make out the famous word Italy that can be seen on satellite imagery. Fascinating isn't it? The land also began to get new life. New, newer, new life. New species that didn't have a chance before, like rabbits and foxes and some more cats, but this time a mixture of real cats and single-celled organism colony cats. Bears, wolves, buffalo, and even rhinos. More penguins suddenly came from the south where they had been hiding in secret. Waiting for the right opportunity to return to the mainland, there were also some frogs, snakes, and even some monkeys and monkey-like creatures. These were early ancestors of humans. Ah, yes, humans. Now was the age of humans. In the beginning, there were just two humans, kind of like Adam and Eve, but it was me and Steve. Steve, however, was gone. Don't be sad. He isn't dead. He is lost in the ocean. I left him there. I accidentally on purpose might have left him there. Steve, if you're watching this. I'm sorry for taking your life vest, but I was really quite cold. If you can find it in yourself to one day return to me, I'll dedicate the rest of my life to making you forgive me. Ah, uh, yeah, I changed my mind. It's too much work. Anyway, after the first two humans, more came. And more. And even some more. And guess what? <laughs> yeah, more. Whoa, 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 whoa. Eventually, towns were popping up all over the lands and people continued to grow. Soon, there wasn't an inch of land that didn't belong to someone. You could even buy a square of land and become a lord or lady for next to nothing. The people began to even arrive through the great guitar hero migration of 63, where a perfect score would lead to power ups in the form of meteors. Great! Fantastic! You guys migrated well. People continued growing more and more and more uh, and they were arriving like more like a, a lot. Soon natural disasters were occurring left, right and centre, trying desperately to thin out the population of humans, but humans didn't get the hint and just kept breeding. Eventually the people started to fight each other over land. They would send bombs to one another's cities just to wipe each other clean off the map or the destruction summoned a mega crab that just came and started murdering loads of people a lot of you probably won't remember this attack as it happened a few million years ago but i'm sure some of you were there you had to have been there because it happened <sighs> you know what you get if you spell man backwards right flashbacks you get flashbacks because it says nam it was a vietnam joke i don't know if it was appropriate or not but i've said it now. Anyway, the crab toyed with the people pretending to stop his attack only to start again. He was like, you can live now. Psych. Eventually he died and exploded, killing a bunch of people. It was both good and sucky because yeah, it was dead, but at what cost? The giant crab's death brought wizards to the land, both good and evil wizards which battled over the lands. Towers sprouted up over the lands. There was land everywhere. This would not be a bad thing, except the towers were towers towers of doom. The doom pie is what made them bad. The tower itself was okay. I guess they could have repurposed them as officers. But whatever, that isn't up for me to decide. It's the people's choice. All this chaos did bring humans together though, which is kind of a good thing. They banded up and decided to start destroying all the evil across the lands. However, all the destruction did bring about a dragon, which just flew around and started to breathe fire on things. The dragon would eventually settle in Wales, where it married into a rich family and became prime minister or whatever leader Wales has. Hold on, does Wales have a leader or do they just use our one? I don't even know. What I do know is that the dragon, the crab and even the Tower of Doom made people question why it was all happening. A new religion was born. Soon, religions were
were popping up all over the planet. The story of religion would change ever so slightly from place to place and it would in turn turn into a brand new religion. Soon there were so many religions fighting for dominance that the world became a complicated place. Aliens did arrive at one point to try and straighten things out and explain which religion was the true religion but the religions just banded together and killed the aliens. Soon the world was so chaotic that wars broke out. Nukes flew and dropped and destroyed everything and everyone. No one was safe. Nothing was safe. The land was slowly reclaimed by the sea and not a single thing remained alive. Well, nothing except for Gary and Gary too. Oh no wait, Gary too just died. So nothing was left except for Gary. I mean, this is where the history of the earth that we know starts. With a single celled organism named Gary on a blue planet. Uh oh crap, I just killed Gary. I just, yeah, I just, I just accidentally killed Gary. I've, I've destroyed history. Um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my midlife crisis unfolding in the form of recreating the history of Earth as much as I've hated every moment of it. If you'd like to see more of this game, perhaps some future predictions, then let me know in the comments below. For now, I'm going to sit here and try and figure out where the world went wrong. Until next time, toodaloo.